step what up. So you're in Algebra 1, and you're about to start Chapter 1 of Algebra 1, and you're taking Pearson Envision Common Core 2018, or if you don't know what that means, Blue Book with the swirlies on it. And you're not ready. You're scared. Well, let's just say I'm Big Dad. Big Dad is going to teach you. Don't be scared. Big Dad is here to save the day. Also, my cat is going to help. He's going to chime in from time to time. Uh, he also recently got a haircut. That's why he looks ridiculous. Uh, chapter 1 in uh, Algebra 1 uh, of this Pearson curriculum deals with a lot of solving equations, a little bit of word problems mixed in and something called inequality. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over the things that you're going to need to feel comfortable about in order for you to do well in this chapter. Um, so first things first, I have a list of numbers and I would like to list them in order from least to greatest. All right. Uh, half of these are decimals. Okay. Half of these are decimals. Some of them are not. So what I'm going to do is the things that are not decimals, I'm going to write out as a decimal. So you're 3.14. I don't know what the square root of 10 is. I know it's a little bit more than 3 because the square root of 9 is 3. What's the square root of 10? It's approximately 3.1622. 3.1622. Like in a ballet. Uh, 7 over 2 is the same thing as 7 divided by 2, which is 3.5. All right. Time to list these in order from least to greatest, from smallest to biggest. So I'm looking at this guy, and if I want to, uh, to make these decimals, because these three decimals that were given to us look an awful lot alike. So I'm gonna attach zeros at the end of those guys so you look like you have four decimals, you look like you have four decimals, you have four decimals, why not just add zeros to these, uh, just, you know, so they can fit in. And we treat these guys as if it's like money, but like special money. Or I have super small 10 cents, and I have uh, uh, 1,400 cents, and I have 100 cents. The smallest of these guys is the first one. Because it's the smallest decimal. 3.001, I'm writing it out as it's originally given. Uh, the second smallest, I have 0.14, I have 0.0, I have 0.1, no, 0.5, no, 0.00. Oh. So since that has two O's, that's a, like 11 cents, whereas this is 100 cents, so you're next. 3.0011. Uh, what comes after that? I have 3.1, 3.0, 3.1, 3.5. How about the 3.0? So 3.01 is the third smallest. And now I have the 3. Point not zeros. So I have uh, this guy, 3.14 versus 3.16 versus 3.50. So 3.14, the pi. And then the 3.16, the square root of 10. And then the 3.5, which is 7 over 2. I did it! So again, what I did is I took all of my numbers, I put them in similar decimal form as all of them, and I just kind of ranked them from the smallest decimal to the biggest. Am I doing it again? I am. Oh, but with negatives. Ah! Don't worry, no matter, I can do this. I can do this. Um, you're negative 4.6. I don't know why I rewrote it out. Square root of 17. 4. The answer something. is approximately 4.1231. So 1, 2, 3, 1. This is supposed to be, the line is supposed to be over the 6, but you know, Microsoft. Negative 4.6 repeating, so a bunch of 6s. We'll just do three of them to stay on brand. Uh, negative 27 divided by 8. It's negative 3.375. Okay, we have a 3 here. All right. So these all have three decimals, three decimals, three decimals. So I'm going to attach two zeros to the end of you so you fit in. Remember. If we were to graph these on a number line like that, 
okay? Put little dots on stuff. The larger the negative, the smaller the number actually is. So like negative four is smaller than negative three. You're gonna want to say that this is the smallest, but ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, it's actually the biggest. The larger the negative number, the smaller it actually is. So my largest negative number is this guy right here, negative 4.6 repeating is my smallest number. And then not too far from it is negative four point regular six, then negative 4.123, which is the square root of negative 17. And then last but certainly not least, the negative 27 over eight. All right, least to greatest. I have like a minute math video of least to greatest problems uh, somewhere on the internet. Watch it. Maybe I'll start linking videos to my videos. I should start doing that. Why not? Can't hurt. Now, like I said, a lot of um, Algebra 1, Chapter 1, is solving equations. A lot of it. It's about most that. And we kind of start off by doing like multi-step equations. We don't go, all right, one steps. All right, let's do the lovely two steps. No, we pretty much hit the ground running. All right. So you need to know one steppers and you need to feel good about one steppers. So these are all one steppers. And what I do is I solve, which means I isolate the variable. I get the variable all by itself. And in these cases, N is not all by itself. Look at this guy. Negative 15 is just floating around. I have to get rid of a negative 15 by floating around, and I do that by doing the opposite of it to both sides. What's the opposite of negative 15? Well, positive 15, of course. So I'm going to add 15 to both sides, add 15 to both sides. When you do that, the negative 15 plus 15 becomes 0, which means it cancels out. And you have n equals negative 9 plus 15, which is 6. 15 minus 9 is 6. Done. That's it. That's a one-stepper. Okay, is n all by itself? No, plus 16 is just floating around. How do I get rid of a plus 16 that's just floating around? What's that? Minus 16, that's right, buddy. Oh, my cat whispered it in my ear while looking in the wrong direction. When you subtract 16 from both sides, the 16 minus 16 crosses out because it comes zero. Nine minus 16 is negative seven. Just subtract the numbers, and since the negative is more powerful, it's negative. How do you like that? Black, pink. Doom, 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 doo, doo, doo. Mm. Is A all by itself? No, there's a over 18. So what's 18 doing to A when it's A over 18? Oh. It's a divided by 18. Well, how do I get rid of a divided by 18? Multiply both sides by 18, of course. Multiply both sides by 18, of course. So that crosses out. A is all alone on the right. And negative 5 times positive 18 is negative 90. I always, 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 always like to have my variable on the left side. So instead of saying negative 90 equals A, A equals negative 90. And if you're wondering why, that's doing too much, sir. When we get to solving inequalities, you'll see why. We're just not there yet. Is N over here all by itself? Right there? No. I have negative 7 in the way. What's negative 7 doing to N? It's multiplying to N, so I'm going to divide everything by negative 7. Twenty-one divided by negative seven is uh, negative three, or twenty-one, because the nine plus ten kid. Negative three is n. Mm, I don't like that. Sloppy. N equals negative three. Bruh. Okay. Oh, fractions. Ooh, I hate fractions. 
Is b all by itself? No. What is in the way? Negative 3 over 4. Now, what's negative 3 over 4 doing to b? Multiplying. I hate dividing fractions. I hate it. I hate it. So what you're going to want to do is instead of dividing a fraction, multiply a reciprocal. What's that? Instead of dividing a fraction, multiply a reciprocal. Instead of dividing a fraction, multiply the reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal. What's the reciprocal? Just take a fraction, flip it. In other words, reciprocal. <laughs> so uh, negative 3 over 4 becomes negative 4 over 3. So times negative 4 over 3. So this crosses out. B equals, comes down. 2 becomes 2 over 1 because when you multiply a whole number to a fraction, you might as well turn that whole number into over 1. Multiply straight across the top, you get 8. Multiply straight across the denominator, you get 3. And a positive times a negative is a negative. Don't believe me? Consult the internet. All right. Now I know what you're thinking. Oh, let's multiply the reciprocal for the next one. No. What is in the way a third? How is a third in the way? It's being added. So what do I need to do? Subtract one third. Now here's the problem. You can't subtract fractions unless the denominator is the same for both. Is it new? No. So what I have is I have 11 over 6 minus a third. Well, that a third is no good, so I need to find the least common denominator. Well, that's not too bad. If this is 6 and you're 3, the least common denominator is going to be 6. So how do I turn that fraction to have a denominator of 6? Multiply the top by 2 and multiply the bottom by 2. So now what this is, is it's 11 over 6 minus 2 over 6. And when you subtract fractions that have the same denominator, you subtract the numbers on top regularly, and then you leave the bottom the way it is. Now here's the other thing. 9 over 6 simplifies because they're both divisible by 3. So divide 9 by 3 and you get 3. Divide 6 by 3 and you get 2. And P is equal to that. I never said it would be pretty. I just said it would be fun. And it is. Oh, distributive property. What is distributive property? Well, distributive property is when you take a number and you multiply it to a group of parentheses, in which side the parentheses is adding or subtracting or a bunch of different things. Uh, and in this case, I am multiplying negative 9 to n and multiplying negative 9 to 6. Negative 9 times n is negative 9n. Negative 9 times positive 6 is negative times a positive negative uh, 54. And I'm done. I'm done. That's it. Well, the next one's easy because I just take that negative and attach it to 3x and then I'm done, right? Wrong. I am saying negative of 3x and negative of negative 9. This is a process called distributing the negative. When all you have is a negative floating around on the outside of a parentheses, you distribute the negative, which means you flip the sign of everything on the inside. So negative times 3x is negative 3x. Negative times negative 9 is positive 9. Flip the sign of everything inside the parentheses. That ladies and jelly spoons is distribute the negative. So that's distribute. You just take the little guy on the outside, you multiply it to every guy on the inside. Combining like terms now. What if I have a bunch of n's and a bunch of regular numbers floating around? I mean, do I combine them into all one big piece? Absolutely not. Like terms are terms that have the same exact variable. So I see an n here that has the same exact variable as 9n. So I, I have 1n. Oh, maybe I write that out. 
and I add that to 9n, I have 10 n's. 10 n's, say that fast. 10 n times. I have a negative 10. Is there anything like a negative 10? Well, it doesn't have a variable. Oh, neither do you. So if I have negative 10 minus three, that's two negatives that add up to negative 13. Can I combine the 10n minus 13? Absolutely not, because one has an n and the other one doesn't. More n's, I'm not really creative with the letters here, although it is the first letter of my name. I have one n, but I'm taking away five n's. So what is that? I, I have an N, I take away five. Uh-oh, I'm four N's in debt. Uh-oh. I have a four here. Is there anything like a four? Yeah, minus nine. Four minus nine is minus five. Let's combine our terms. Pretty simple. Pretty simple. Oh. Hmm. All right, so 10, you're not attached to anything. Oh, but see this negative five, and yeah, the negative five, not the five, because that five is negative. That negative five gets distributed to nine n and negative nine. So nothing happens with the 10 because it's floating around. It's just a 10, not a negative 10. The 10 is all by itself 10. Negative five times nine n is negative 45 n. Negative 5 times negative 9 is positive 45. Done, right? Wrong. Because not only can I distribute here, I can combine that 10 and that positive 45 because they're like terms. So I have 55 because 10 plus 45 is 55 minus 45 n. Yeah. Now I'm done. Because you're a regular old number and you have a letter to